you. At ServiceNow Knowledge 14 is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Barry Libinson is here. He's the CIO of Safeway, um, going through some pretty interesting transformations, and we're going to unpack that. We're live at the ServiceNow Knowledge Conference. We'll be here for three days, uh, covering wall-to-wall. -wall. This is theCUBE. We go out, we extract the signal from the noise, we find great guests like Barry. Thanks very much for coming on. Sure, my pleasure. So you guys are going through uh, quite uh, a time right now. We were talking off camera about the merger that's going on between Safeway and Albertson. Uh, I think you said it's the largest merger in in grocery history, and uh, and what the sixth largest in retail history? Uh, it's or? the uh, it's the largest merger in grocery history, and one of the largest mergers in retail ever, and it will create the sixth largest employer in the United States with over a quarter of a billion a uh, quarter of a million employees. Wow. So, um, okay. So you're uh, you're busy doing a lot of due diligence, figuring out how you're going to merge systems. Flying to Boise. <laughs> <laughs> We're flying to Boise and Boise's flying to us. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of both. Okay, so um, so uh, you were at Land Lakes before, CIO at Land Lakes. Uh, you guys did some acquisitions, right, when you were there? We did. We, uh, we well, everybody's heard of the largest pudding manufacturer, which is obviously Jell-O. Uh, the second largest pudding manufacturer is Cozy Shack. Now, most people would not have heard of that, but we actually we did the acquisition of Cozy Shack. Uh, uh, Land Lakes also owned Purina and did the acquisition of Purina uh, Animal Feed uh, and also owned Winfield, which is the largest distributor of, of uh, seed in the United States. What's it like for a CIO um, in a company that's acquisitive or doing a mega merger? Where, how do you spend your time? Um, you know, what kind of interactions do you have with the, the business side? How much of it is sort of financial versus process? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, you know, at the end of the day, it, it really is about supporting the business and, and figuring out how to integrate two businesses of this size uh, involves a lot of interaction with the business to understand what the operating model will look like, you know, what, what, what technology that we have will be adopted, what processes that we have will be adopted, what processes that Albertsons has will be adopted and, and what technology that they use and sort of figuring out what the best possible outcome is and then building the systems to support uh, the environment is, is really what it's all about and it's a lengthy process. Do you generally go in, I mean maybe it's, it probably varies by company, but in your experience have you gone in with sort of an open mind, let's see which technology works and we're going to keep, what the pro or is it more dogmatic? You, we're going to fold this into our process. Uh, you know, I'd love to say that it's more open-minded, but the fact is it does tend to be fairly regimented mm -hmm. and, and more dogmatic, but that doesn't mean that people aren't open-minded. It means you do whatever makes the most sense, but it's a pretty complex, it's like solving a, this complex equation with a lot of variables, and the variables are things like time and cost and benefits and complexity and sort of figuring out what the best possible solution to all of those challenges uh, is what so goes into it. So you're essentially running business cases on each of the major parts of the portfolio. And, I mean, you get huge application portfolios, right? So how do you do that? Do you, do you chunk it into some kind of manageable logical suites, or do you go like really granular? How's your, how's yeah, it, you know, the thought process varies depending on the acquisition or the merger. In this particular case, you know, it's, it's really about speed. You know, how quickly can we combine the two companies? And, and that involves a lot of things. I mean, there's, you know, we have 1,400 stores, they have 1,000 stores. Uh, we have one financial system, they have another financial system. Figuring out, you know, how to do this the most expedient and most cost-effective way possible um, is a pretty daunting task, but that's really what you have to do is look at each individual process and determine how you're going to go forward and then prioritize things and, and execute on that. And I would imagine some of that is actually documenting some of those processes. Yeah, it, 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 well, and everything <laughs> yeah. has to be documented. Yeah. I mean, you have to create run books essentially for every function so that it's well documented. Um, there's obviously huge security uh, considerations that have to go into running any kind of retail operation of this magnitude, so it's a huge task. Yeah. Yeah. So talk problem. a little bit about innovation, because obviously you've got a huge operational machine that's just going and going and going, but in terms of trying to find innovative ways to do things better, whether that be internal development or looking at some new technologies where maybe you don't have a real clear ROI model, there isn't a, a business case that you can really map out cleanly. How do you integrate that in with 
as, as uh, we heard earlier, the rest of the iceberg underneath the water. Yeah, so, so the, when, anytime you do a merger like this, you know, you look for areas to improve a process that, that one party may not necessarily have. So, you know, for example, one of the things that Safeway is really well known for is its loyalty program. And we have a highly uh, customized offering system based on your purchase behavior that, that allows us to, to, to provide offers that are unique to you that may be completely different from what I get. Um, being able to leverage that as a, as a very innovative platform into an additional 1,000 stores and, and, and tens of millions of, of new customers um, it, you know, is one of the things that is, is taken into consideration whenever you do a, a, a merger like this. So uh, you know, we'll look at the, the way, the, way uh, the, the, the other party does things, they'll look at the way we do things, and you try to come up with the best of both worlds, leveraging whatever innovation has, has, has been uh, has been put in place by, by either side. So it's, it's a good opportunity to really, you know, the whole concept of a merger like this is to get synergies, and those synergies can come in a lot of different ways, and innovation is, is often one of them. I wonder if we could dig in a little deeper, because you guys had a regular loyalty program for years. I'm, I'm a member, like in the number, and then you came out with a new one about a year ago or so, right? That was a, a, couple of years a ago, different yeah. level of, of um, customization or personalization, I should probably say. Yep. Where was the zenith of that? Is that external, internal? And then I know it was a little bit maybe more controversial than, than uh, the first one, just because you're starting to get into letting people know that you're tracking things closer than maybe they might have thought before. Sure. So, so the, 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 the platform is several years old. It was an internally conceptualized uh, system with the belief that doing something that was different from what everybody else did would provide a competitive advantage, which has proven uh, to be true. That if we could create offers, you know, so, so for example, if you don't have children, it doesn't make a lot of sense to offer you a coupon for diapers. If you do have children, uh, especially young children, um, and we can determine that from a certain buying behavior, like if we notice that you're buying a lot of baby formula, odds are you probably could use some diapers, <laughs> right, or vice versa. And so creating custom offers along those lines really improves the customer experience versus, you know, somebody like myself. I mean, I, you know, my, my kids are out of the house. I don't need diapers. So sending me diaper coupons is, is hardly a, a worthwhile thing to do. Uh, and the idea was to, to really uh, personalize the shopping experience for customers. And, uh, uh, and, 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 and uh, th there is a certain amount of, of uh, you know, Whenever you sign up for a loyalty program, you're obviously acknowledging that we're, you know, that there's a certain amount of information that's going to be collected in that in that process. I think people are starting to understand that, you know, that information is is incredibly valuable, and and we do use it. And ideally, the customer benefits as a result of us having that information and knowing what they've been buying, so that we can offer them things that would uh, be more applicable to their lifestyle and and and. Uh, and allow them to save money on the things where it really matters. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, uh, ServiceNow. You, you brought ServiceNow into Land O'Lakes, mm -hmm. um, and you were, where are you at um, with Safeway in terms of the implementation? So it's a fairly new uh, 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 platform for us at, at, at Safeway, but the, the challenge is very similar, but on a much larger scale. When I brought ServiceNow in the, into Land O'Lakes, uh, I brought it in very early when I joined the company, largely because as I looked at the portfolio of applications that we had and looked at failures and, and things along those lines, I couldn't understand why we were having failures in particular systems and why it was taking so long to get them resolved because I just didn't have the information that was necessary in order to really understand where we should be making investments. The whole idea behind implementing ServiceNow was to be able to better track what was going on inside the application portfolio across all the different lines of business that we had so that we could determine where we needed to make investments um, and, and, it, and it paid off extreme, you know, huge. Um, we, we reduced the, the downtime of applications from several hours to about a 20 minute remediation time. The number of failures we had went down dramatically because we knew where the problem points were. So imagine that like on a scale of 10 inside of an organization like Safeway where you have 1,400 to 2,400, going to 2,400 stores where you have services that you're providing to all of the stores, and then you have the backstage operation where you've got over 30,000 knowledge workers that are working on all kinds of different systems in order to support the organization. Same sort of challenge, you know, really understanding what's going on within the systems so that you can make the right investments uh, to help 
speed up remediation and, and make better investments. And you're in the process of implementing now? We are. Okay, yeah. and so but you you had something beforehand. Was it homegrown? Or homegrown system, um, and tools? some on-premise tools. Uh -huh. I mean, we did a very strategic uh, uh, look across the spectrum of applications, and I, and I will admit, I tried to stay out of that. I mean, I, I really delegated that responsibility to my team and, and with, with obviously a strong preference and hope that they would come to the right answer being service now, but I didn't, uh, it wasn't my really? decision, it was theirs. Okay. And, and obviously I fully supported it, but. So uh, it wasn't a prerequisite of you coming. No, it, 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 no, it, 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 it wasn't. And, yeah, and, and, and I just, I say that only because while I'm incredibly loyal to the brand and to the company, and I think it's a great product, it was important to me that the organization came to the right decision on their own without me having to sort of stiff arm them into to picking the platform and so they, they picked it on their own. And let me just follow real quick. He said thirty thousand knowledge workers. Yeah, roughly thirty thousand behind the scenes, uh, you know, what we call knowledge workers. Now a knowledge worker also includes some of the senior management in the stores okay. as well. Still a big number. How um Will you leverage the platform, the ServiceNow platform, for the merger? Um, what, what, what specifically will you uh, leverage? Well, you, you know, when, when you start taking uh, and combining financial platforms and, and merchandising systems, I mean, you know, how you distribute goods to, to, to all of these stores, and and then how do you, you know, you handle all the logistics and transportation of supplying goods and services across the country to 2,400 stores? There's a there's a tremendous number of systems that are touched. Uh, every single one basically will be monitored and ticketed and, 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 the, and ServiceNow will be the platform that we will use in a follow the sun. And we have an organization out of Manila that has uh, close to 600 employees that pick up support after hours from the U.S. And we've got a team in Arizona, team in Pleasanton that, 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 that trade off. So the tool will be used pretty much on a 24-hour basis to monitor everything that we're doing across all of the platforms, and that will be particularly important during the, uh, the merger activities. How about this notion of, of ServiceNow as an application development platform? And you got you know, CIO, your, your developers, your application heads, they're, they're kind of like your, uh, you know, your quarterback, your wide receiver, you know, your, your money players. Um, what are your thoughts on, on ServiceNow as an application platform um, for development? Where do you see that going? You know, it, it's one of the things that we'll ultimately look at. It's, it's not at the top of the list given the merger activity. It's pretty much all consuming. But, you know, we're, we're seeing obviously platform as a service, whether it's uh, the ServiceNow offering or, or the other guys that are located in San Francisco, who are a great company too, who I won't name. But, I mean, you're, you're, you're seeing it, it is a more And there's more a lot pervasive. of everybody. That's a land grab right it, now. It, 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 it really yeah. is. I, I think that ServiceNow is particularly well positioned in that space. It's not something, most of the development we do right now, for example, around the loyalty platform is done in, in, in Java yeah, and, and, uh, um, and sits on a very, you know, uh, resilient um, um, database architecture because of the scale. I mean, there's 12 million you know, over 12 million active customers on mm -hmm. it, not, and, and the number of offers that have to go out on a, a daily basis is enormous. Mm -hmm. So we haven't looked at platform as a service as a way of distributing that yet, but um, it is one of the things that we'll probably be diving into. You said you, into. you thought ServiceNow was well positioned, why? Because of simplicity, or because uh, I, of the service orientation, the focus? Or? I, I think all of the above. I think, first of all, they're one of the first companies to really you know, you know, if you, Salesforce and, and ServiceNow are really the two players that I think are best positioned in the, in, the, in the platform as a service. And I'm probably annoying some of my other suppliers by saying that, but it, it is what it is. I mean, early on, you know, kind of get the model. But it's, it's, but it's more of a, it's closer to a solution. Uh, yes. Then, I mean, it, and it integrates so well with the service desk offering and all the capabilities that you need around that. So you can build, you know, there's a lot of examples of applications that have been built around the service desk. Um, leveraging the, the platform as a service architecture. Yeah, the whole the whole past discussion is is kind of fuzzy. You got you know, I always say you got infrastructure service plus, you got SaaS minus, you got. Yeah. I think the like, land grab yeah. thing is a really good. It's, yeah, that's yeah, a very yeah, accurate. Yeah. And uh, people assessment. see it as a huge opportunity. All these big data apps. They say, all right, we got to get a piece of that action. It's yeah. almost as though the vendor community is saying, all right, we're going to invest in this for us. Sure. You know, because yeah. we got to be there. And, and I do think that ServiceNow's uh, mindset is different. Hey, we can do this. It's easy. Let's put it yeah, out there. You know, yeah. for, 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 you know, the thing, other thing I'll say about ServiceNow is, you know, the, the execution, at least for me and for my organization, has been near flawless. I mean, you know, four years of running it at uh, Atlanta Lakes without a hiccup. And, and so I have a high degree of confidence in the, in the company's ability to scale and deliver solutions. 
um, in a way that is, you know, for, for, for and, and that's exactly as a CIO what you rely on mm -hmm. from any service-based provider. You don't want to have to worry about it. No phone calls, no problems, it just runs 99.99% of the time, you know, and, um, and, and that's what they do well, so. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, last question, because we've run up of time. So other stuff that's exciting you. You drive a Tesla, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, How long I, have you had that? Uh, I got it, I picked it up at the end of March. I've sort of really bought Sweet. into the California lifestyle. Well, you get the ROI thing going too, as yeah. you know, one of our guests, Ray Wang, told me. No, Dave, the ROI of a Tesla is fantastic. Well, and I have solar <laughs> panels on my there house, so it doesn't cost me that's anything cool. to charge it either. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sort of all in. Yeah, yeah that's good. You got kids? Uh, older kids. You know, do you yeah. let them drive the Tesla? No, no they way. didn't no, get to. No, they've never. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that's no. great. <laughs> didn't even. Didn't even. No. Uh, right, it wasn't well, even a consideration. My insurance agent's very happy about yeah, that. Yeah, I'll bet. All right, Barry, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for hey, coming to the Cube. Really a Thank pleasure. You. Good luck yeah. with the merger. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is the Cube. We're live from Moscone in San Francisco. We'll be right back.